What's up people, Dobbs Fools, it's right here and welcome to Game Jams. The last two episodes we talked about the Nintendo GameCube and of course the Sega Game Gear. Two handheld consoles clashing out to be the top dog of the handhelds. However, the Sega Game Gear had one thing that Game Boy didn't have and that was a coloured screen. So of course, G Nintendo's Game Boy had to counter it and make their own coloured handheld console. Which of course was the Game Boy Colour. And of course, the Game Boy Color had many advantages than anything else. A massive library of games. And of course, the new installments of Pokemon and other fantastic franchises like Metroid, Legend of Zelda, and of course, the Mario franchise. And sadly for that, that was definitely the massive demise of the Sega Game Gear. But today, we are talking about the Game Boy Color. Now, Game Boy Color, as you guys know, look like these. They're pretty much translucent. You can see the insides and everything. Now of course there are some of them that are actually coloured but the main ones are pretty much translucent. That's how you can tell from what cartridge is which. And plus it also say Game Boy Colour. Now to tell you the truth with people I do have a smaller collection of Game Boy Colour games. However I have been very picky for my collection, meaning going after the rare ones and also the ones I've always wanted to play. And I've picked myself five right here on my treasures. Now, just like to get, let you people know as always, they're not going to be the ones that I follow, like the Pokemon, the Resident Evils and the Final Fantasies. You get my gist because it would be classed as too much like cheating. So, five I picked, we're going to talk a bit about them and tell you why they are my gems. First off, the first one I'm going to talk about is one that Angry Video Game Nerd actually talked about that and said it was a piece of crap. And it is Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle number 4. Now, a lot of people may agree with AVGN. I slightly disagree. Yes, it is a very cheap game to be made. However, the game had something for it that was completely different to anything else. It's a puzzle platform game. You have to find all the keys to get to the next area, to get to the next level, etc, etc. That's all what it is. It's pretty much a level-based game form of a treasure hunting game. However, the music's extremely catchy. The levels can get actually quite difficult if you don't have a clue what you're trying to do. And of course, it's Bugs Bunny, and I love what I love Warner Brothers Bugs Bunny. He's a he's a he's an awesome character. He's my childhood as well. But why Crazy Castle number four? Why not any of the others? Because Crazy Castle number four was the final Crazy Castle game that featured Bugs Bunny in it, and it was one of his bests. That's what I'm thinking. Because the next one that he did, Crazy Castle number five, which came out on the Game Boy Advance, it had Woody the Woodpecker in it, and it wasn't really that good. But that one, to be honest, is my absolute favorite, and it's a gem in my eyes. And you should definitely have a look up to it again, people. Don't listen to the one person on what it says. Have it your own way and test it out for yourself. Is it good in your eyes or is it bad? For me, it's definitely a treasure in my eyes. I like it. Next up is going to be something that is quite unusual. And that is Star Wars Episode 1, Obi-Wan's Adventure. Now, this came out around about the same time as The Phantom Menace on the PlayStation 1. Now, the PS1 was more connected to the actual film. This is pretty much just based off Obi-Wan Kenobi. And it pretty much follows up around about the beginning of the film and then a little bit of the end. Not as much, though. I never got really far in it because it was quite a challenging one for me being playing as a kid and what I only what I remember mostly from this game is that it has all the soundtracks of Star Wars in Game Boy form. So yeah, <laughs> it's quite interesting. If you haven't had a try and play this game before, please check it out. I think it's a fun game. And of course it's Star Wars, so it's fine with the lightsaber. Yes, it's in it's in the Game Boy colour form, but still it leaves up to be a quite a fun, entertaining game, and it's quite a treasured game as well. Not, I've not seen a lot of copies of this. Probably it's not extremely expensive. It could be quite cheap. But once again, no, I would definitely say that it's definitely 100% a gem in my eyes. Next up, for number three, 
is a treasured TV show for me. It came out years and years ago, but when I was young, it came out on a TV show called Boomerang. And the show that I'm talking about is Racky Races. Racky Races, this game alone, including the TV show, was just all about racing. It's a racing game. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, Dobbs, you hate racing games. You don't like Jeep Gran Turismo. You don't like any type of racing game at all. Yeah, but it's got to be fun at the same thing. And it's not really realistic. This is a cartoon racing game, which I do like. And of course, I like Dastardly and Mudley. I love them two characters. They've been an absolute iconic duo for many, many years. It's just the same amount of time as Tom and Jerry and all the rest of the great cartoon characters of old school. Now, the game reminds me pretty much the Game Boy version of Mario Kart. So if you put the SNES version of Super Mario Kart and make it into a Game Boy game, you pretty much got this, pretty much. And now a lot of you may disagree with me saying, oh no, it's a lot, lot cheaper than that. It was cheaply made, which of course it did not make, it didn't cost a lot of money to make this one game. It just needed the copyrights for the game. But, still though, every single character from Racky Races is in this game. They did not half ass this game. They got everybody in this game. Of course, some of them you had to unlock to, to obtain them, but still though, that was the thing about this game. You had to unlock specific characters so you could play them. So you can't go ahead and pick your absolute favourite like Dastardly Mudley and all them lot. You had to try your hardest to try and unlock them on different levels. And that's what I liked about it. It made you want more because you want your favourite character to be played for. And that's why it's a gem in my eyes. And you should definitely give it a try, people. It's a fun game. Next up for number two. I only have the first version of this. The other second, the second version is just as hard to find and I can't find it anywhere. And that is The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Now there is another one which is a blue version which I think is Oracle of Ages. Pretty much in my eyes they're pretty much exactly the same. And pretty much this is just exactly the same as any other Legend of Zelda game. However, this one is quite unique though from any of the other Legend of Zeldas. This consists of seasons. So this game is consists of a different timeline of season of the world. So this one's more summer and spring and the other one's more like cold and winter. If you guys see what I mean. The game, both games pretty much have pretty much the same amount of story. But I think if I remember, some of the bosses are different. That's all what is different about it. And I really do like the red one a lot for what I've played on it. Um, is it really the best Red Legend of Zelda game? Definitely not. But is it unique? Absolutely. Is it fun? Absolutely. Does it have stuff that makes me remember it quite well? Yes, to be honest. Um, some of the secret dungeons in the game to try and find the specific items you want to find are quite inventive for what it was back in the time. When there was no imagination to think about it like you go back to the NES era and the SNES version that some of the um, unlockables that you needed to get were hidden away by a special door or a, a rocky wall that you need to blow up with these were quite different ways of doing it with this game and that's why I liked about it and it's to be honest I think it was the only Game Boy Color game that had a Legend of Zelda game so that's something that's quite unique so if you want to go after the whole collection you have to get the Game Boy Color versions so yeah that's why I'm picking number two as Legend of Zelda um, Oracle of Seasons definitely a, definitely a gem in my eyes and I'm sure it's a gem in other people's eyes as well if you're a massive Legend of Zelda fan but what is number one for me now as you guys know I would I, if I had the if I if I had the choice to do Pokemon, Pokemon Crystal would be number one. But like I said, everybody's played it. It's a gem anyway. But this one was something unique. I only picked this up recently in a random car boot, if you guys want to know. And that is Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. What's so deluxe about it? Pretty much what it is, is the original Super Smash Brothers, I mean Super Mario Brothers, but full on revamped. Yeah. This is a remaster, the first ever remaster ever to be made before any of the other stuff from the SNES and all that lot. This was the first one 
And that's why it's quite unique to me because I did not expect that. But a deluxe one, which actually is a remaster. Because if I remember, Super Mario Bros. came out in 1987, 1989. This one came out in 1998. Mmm, quite a few years later down the line. But tell you the truth though, it's a fantastic remaster of the original game. And as well, they made the characters look more realistic for what they're supposed to look like. Um, not too realistic like Game Boy Advance here or something like that. But they, they had the colours for what they should be looking like. Because if you look at the original Game Boy games of Mario, they didn't even look like them. But this one definitely does with the colour. So... That's why it's definitely a gem in my eyes, and plus, it's a fantastic Mario game as well. So, if you guys have not played this Mario game, please make sure you give it a whirl, because I definitely do recommend it. So, that's pretty much all I have to talk about with this, the Game Boy Color. Like I said, the Game Boy Color collection in my in my collection is not really massive, because the, I was very, very choosy when it comes to my Game Boy Color games, because there is quite a few of them, quite a lot of them out there, but it's mainly stock filler um, Game Boy Color games, really like cheap old rubbish ones. And there's, but there is some good, good gems in the actual franchise of the Game Boy Color. But anyhow, that's why I have to say: Super Mario Bro Deluxe, Legend of Zelda Oracle Seasons, Racky Races, Star Wars Obi Wan's Adventure, and of course, Crazy Castle Number Four. If you guys do have a Game Boy Color, aka the Game Boy Color games, what is your top five or what is your five picks of gems in your collection? And remember people, don't go ahead and pick the most obvious ones like, you know, like the Pokemon games because everybody knows that they're out there unless they're the only ones you own. But like I said though people, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe as always. I about 87% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel but you still watch my videos so what the hell are you lot doing? Subscribe for God's sakes. It's free. And of course, if you guys love the Game Gem episodes and you missed out on a few episodes, please look in the playlist down below and watch the whole entire series at this moment in time. And as well as, a massive shout out to um, Sawfum. They're amazing. That's where I mainly get some of my games from there as well. With that being said, the people I'm still going to see you guys subscribing and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!